This is the story of the 100 heads challenge and how it almost broke me. So, am I proud that I did this challenge? Yes, absolutely. Do I recommend that you do this challenge? I think so. Did I enjoy this challenge in the process? No, not at all. I hated it with every fiber of my being. I wanted nothing more than to cease to exist for the duration of the time that I spent on this challenge, which was honestly way more than I wanted to spend. This video took me like two and a half weeks to make and I'm proud of the video. I love the heads that I created. I think I'm definitely proud that I did this challenge, but it was, it was too much. It was so much. For those of you that have been longtime viewers of the channel, you will know that I have been wanting to practice my drawing skills and become more comfortable painting and drawing figures, aka people and faces, for ages, and I've never actually been able to commit to a consistent practice where I develop those skills. So I had to do something to keep me accountable and to like kickstart this habit, and this challenge was a good way to do that, and I did publicly announce that I was doing it. So there was pressure the game was on and I had to actually show up or be seen breaking my promise not fulfilling my goals and that worked in terms of like getting me to actually do the thing that I've been putting off doing and so if you're like me and you struggle to achieve your goals unless it is for a work related or audience building related task I would really recommend making a video out of it sort of holding yourself accountable in that respect or doing like something where you keep your followers, your audience, or your family and your friends updated to have that kind of accountability partnership that was really helpful for me. But this challenge, honestly, it almost broke me. It really did. In the first part of this challenge, I had a chronic case of perfectionism and it almost wrecked me. Because my drawing skills had gone unused for so long, the first 25 or so heads took me over four days to complete. I could tell that they weren't right when I looked at them. So I kept erasing and erasing and drawing and erasing and drawing and erasing over and over again until I looked up at the clock and realized I'd made basically no progress. I had to speed up. So my drawing skills were genuinely very rusty. I was having a really, really hard time speeding up, becoming accurate. My sketches looked nothing like the reference photo. Maybe like first cousins once removed or like the reference photo mugged you in a parking lot and like you were describing the reference photo to me, a very subpar police sketch artist, that was kind of like the results that I was getting. If you look at the reference photos, which I will have in the description, by the way, I used a Pinterest board, you'll notice that the likenesses that I was able to achieve really wax and wane in terms of accuracy. Sometimes I get it dead on, it looks great. Other times it looks nothing like the person photographed, especially if it's a celebrity. And I think that just generally contributes to the point of like, I think I know how to draw a face with the reference photo, but when it comes to achieving a likeness, I still have a lot of work to do in that respect. I am definitely not anywhere close to where I want to be when it comes to actually reliably capturing someone's likeness. For those of you that have ever done challenges like this before, you'll know that speed is the name of the game. To complete this challenge in any reasonable time frame, much less the typical 10 days, you have to be fast. And that was the first major obstacle that I encountered. I had to leave my perfectionism behind and crank out these drawings as fast as possible. Timers seemed like the obvious solution, and I don't think that I would have been able to complete this challenge without them. I started with a 10 minute timer and then moved to seven and finally five, and suddenly I was flying through these heads. 10 a day became more achievable than ever, 15 to 20 was the stretch goal, and I could feel myself improving, my grasp of facial anatomy becoming more advanced. Even my ability at achieving a true likeness of the reference was getting better. But as my sketches got faster, as my ability to capture likeness improved, as the overall quality of the drawings that I was producing increased, I could see the light at the end of the tunnel. The challenge seemed more achievable than it ever had before, but then the burnout hit. 
While I had been sketching heads like my life depended on it, the rest of my hobbies had been neglected. Oil paintings sat unfinished, books had been left unread, ingredients for my next baking project stood in the pantry untouched, my creative energy had hit an all-time low, and with it, my motivation. <sighs> okay, so it is Monday, March 21st, and I am so tired of this f challenge. I'm so tired, I don't wanna draw heads anymore. And you, the worst part, the worst part of this, okay, I am on head 45. I have 55 more heads to go. I'm not even halfway done. Oh, I hate this. I hate this. I hate this so much. I hate this so much. I dreaded sitting down at my desk and opening my sketchbook like I never had before. But the challenge still remained, and the over 50 heads that I had left to do felt more impossible than ever. I knew from experience that I needed to take a break, the Kelsey that you saw in that last clip was obviously not doing well. She was stressed out, she was overwhelmed, and I have fallen so far behind on everything because of this challenge. I had to put my entire life and career on the back burner to complete this, which is great, and I would not have been able to do this without the income streams that I've built and my lovely, lovely patrons who were kind enough to support me. That growing community on Patreon has been sort of the thing that has enabled me to be able to take breaks like this. And I had no idea that I was going to keep missing uploads in order to work on this challenge, but I, I wanted this to be the next video. And as a result, I had neglected all of my other hobbies. My shop launch has fallen behind schedule. And just in general, I feel like I had to put my life on hold to complete this in a way that I didn't really want to do. It required so much of my attention. And I feel like in the future, I would really like to do more challenges like this, more sort of videos where I do advance my skills, but it can't come at the expense of consistency and like the rest of the stuff that I'm doing. Do you know what I mean? So I had to figure out a way to make this challenge more enjoyable, more sustainable for me, both in terms of my mental health and my schedule, and that was a difficult thing to try and achieve. But I didn't really take a break. I did what I would never recommend you do, honestly, but what I kind of felt like I had to. I kept working. At this point, the challenge wasn't fun anymore. It was just work. That isn't to say that I regret it, because I don't. I do really like the heads that I sketched in this challenge, and I think that it was definitely worth it but I didn't enjoy the process for its own sake like I do with other creative pursuits like oil painting. That being said, there were a couple of things that I did to make this last stretch of the challenge more enjoyable. The main thing that kept me sane was actually live streaming. I did three live streams in the two weeks I spent working on this challenge, two of them in the last few days. I found that just hanging out with you guys and chatting both lifted my spirits and also made sure that I stayed productive and kept working on the heads. At this point in the challenge, I was looking for any and every possible excuse to stop working on these. When I got stuff in the mail that was related to my shop launch, I was like, oh my god, let me, let me open these packages, <laughs> let me order new prints, let me investigate all of this stuff, and I spent so much time distracted and unproductive, which did absolutely delay this process and this video because I just didn't want to work on these. It just became so tedious to do over and over again. But again, I am, I am happy that I did it. I am grateful for this experience, but I don't think I would do it again. Um, and live streaming and hanging out with you guys really helped me stay on task. It was really enjoyable. And if you kept me company during those live streams. I just want to say thank you because it was honestly really, really helpful. So yeah. Leveling up your skills as an artist is sometimes a really painful experience, especially if you do a challenge like this one and share it online. There's not only the difficulty of the challenge itself, especially with the time constraint element, but it's hard to show yourself failing on camera. I'd often draw like a really, really terrible head and then want to scrap the entire video as a result because I didn't want to share that public failure 
on YouTube. I didn't want there to be evidence of the fact that I wasn't a good artist, which is weird because I publish myself failing online all of the time, but with this one, it felt so much more intense, so much more personal. It felt like if I couldn't draw a head, I wasn't a real artist, which is of course not true. I mean, every artist has specialties and specializations. That's the beauty of art. It can be anything and everything. And musicians are artists, just like sculptors are artists, just like abstract painters and felt needle artists and embroiderers. Is that even a word? Anyway. If anyone ever tells you there's like a thing that you have to fulfill in order to be an artist, if they try and gatekeep that identity from you, just ignore them. They're not someone worth paying any attention to. Don't put any, don't put any stock into their opinions. If there is one thing that you need to do to be an artist, it is to make art. That's it. End of story. If you do this, congrats you are an artist. If you want to claim that identity for yourself, I will be the last person to stop you. I have people in my comment section all the time try and convince me that I'm not an artist because I don't do X, Y, or Z. For example, I got a comment once that said I wasn't an artist because I don't sell my work, be it original paintings or prints right now. I'm working on that, but I don't do it right now. So right now they say I am not an artist. And I don't want to ascribe malicious intent to their comments. I don't want to say they were gatekeeping, but having an online shop is a lot of work. There's a lot that goes into it. You have to have the space for it. You have to have the starting capital of ordering the prints and the packaging and registering as a business, collecting sales tax, figuring out how you're going to collect sales tax, building an audience or like a base of customers, figuring out how your marketing is going to work, getting an online storefront, getting all of that stuff taken care of, getting a PO box so you don't have your residential address on the things that you mail out to people. There is so much that goes into this. And it's like, that's just such a trivial thing to say that you're not an artist if you don't do this one thing. Is Van Gogh any less of an artist because he only ever sold one painting? No, of course not. That's, that's, it's silly. It's so silly. But I felt that way when I was doing this challenge, that if I couldn't draw a head, I wasn't a real artist. And obviously it was false, but it was a thing that I was feeling. And I had to deconstruct that. I had to ask myself why I felt that way. I had to push through it. I had to be comfortable in my failure. I had to be comfortable being uncomfortable. And that was painful to sit through and try and push past. And a big part of why this challenge took me so long is because I just felt bad about myself. I felt bad that I wasn't immediately good at this, which is silly, of course, but I still felt that way. I had to just continually remind myself, like, I have chosen to become an artist. I think, therefore I am. And there's no council of artists that decides what identity you ascribe to. That's something that you choose. I am no less of an artist because I was terrible at drawing heads at the beginning of this challenge, and I am no more an artist because I am better at the end of it. I was an artist the whole time. It was inside of me all along. So obviously that earlier sentiment was not true. Obviously, I was no less of an artist because I was bad at this in the beginning, but the sentiment still remains that I was uncomfortable with failure, not just in my lived experience, but also filming it, also creating this video, showing you guys, putting this out there. So yeah, it's uh, it's complicated. Being seen to fail on camera is a skill that I think you honestly have to develop. I think maybe some people come to it naturally and some people don't, and it takes practice to get good at. As soon as you start filming yourself and sharing your work online, even in any respect, you learn very quickly what parts of yourself, your personality, your skill set, your weaknesses as an artist that you are uncomfortable with or insecure about. And when you start sharing this work, Those insecurities are put into stark relief because suddenly it's holding you back. In my day-to-day life as an artist, I don't draw heads all the time. It's not a thing that I do. I don't practice my drawing skills. So of course I'm not good at it. What I do naturally, what I'm good at because I've practiced, is landscapes and oil paint. That's a thing that I've put lots of time and energy in developing that skill. 
So of course, I'm not going to be good at stuff that I haven't put effort into. And just reminding yourself of this when you're practicing your own skills as an artist is important. It's okay to be bad at something. It's okay to show yourself failing and growing. I think it's important to perpetuate a culture where it's okay to be seen failing or not good at something or growing or developing. We do not exit from the womb fully formed as humans. We make mistakes, we grow, we do better. That's life. And I want to share that vulnerability and I want to be open and transparent with you guys, but I also want to be taken seriously. So that's like a tightrope that you have to walk, I think, as a content creator, where you have to establish some type of experience, some type of expertise with your audience to build that trust and provide value. But I also want to be comfortable being uncomfortable, showing myself failing and growing. I think that's an important part of my journey. And as you guys know, this channel is all about sharing the journey and showing what that's like and just paving and just creating all of these videos as a reference for you to look back on to see how I grew my career. And that's like the purpose of this channel. None of that would have ever been possible without you guys, without my audience and without my lovely patrons. And that's who is sponsoring this video. Making these videos is a lot of work. And if you enjoyed it and wanna see more just like it, consider supporting me over on Patreon. In addition to bonus videos, monthly prints, and exclusive content, you also help support the creation of these videos and me as a creator. I never would have been able to embark on a longer project like this and skipped multiple uploads if it hadn't been for my growing community over on Patreon. And I would love to be in a position someday where the videos on this channel could be entirely funded by our community, but we're just not there yet. In the meantime, however, we are just about done with this challenge. As we finish up these last few sketches and get ready to see the entire collection of 100 heads, I hope you can see the development in my drawing skills just like I can. From starting out stiff and inaccurate in proportions to slowly improving, getting faster, looser, and more accurate, I think the difference is like night and day. Obviously, there were ebbs and flows, as my motivation waxed and waned, but I'm proud of these heads, even as I am so, so much happier to be done. Let me know in the comments which head is your favorite, and with that, I hope you guys have a great rest of your week, and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.